Welcome back to my studio. Um, it was kind of nice having the weekend off, not having to put out a video every day. So uh, today's Sunday, I am back in the studio painting. Um, and I'm going to talk today about, about some kind of really deep kind of philosophical kind of uh, conceptual stuff about when you're painting abstractly. Um, and if you're just painting pure abstract, this doesn't apply. But there's a, there's a whole spectrum between painting representationally and then abstracting it somewhat uh, until you get to total abstract. And when you're abstracting it somewhat, you get to determine what is the subjective reality in that image, but then you have to obey the rules that you set. Uh, and that's, it's a fairly complex um, idea. Um, so I'm gonna spend uh, quite a few minutes talking about that. And actually there's a perfect opportunity in this painting to demonstrate and explain it. So um, stick around and we'll get into, into the kind of conceptual stuff of what are the rules when you paint abstractly. So I mentioned that when we paint abstractly, um, as long as it's not pure abstract, then there are still certain rules that apply to the reality that you create. Now you get to create what is the subjective reality, but then you have to be faithful to what are those rules. And I know that sounds fairly complicated and it might be kind of over the head um, of some of you out there, depending where you are right now. Um, but the best way that I can describe it, um, this is kind of prompted be because of a discussion that we had when I was away on the painting weekend last weekend. And we were involved in doing critiques and there were a number, number of people um, that were painting landscapes where their branches were just bad. You know, so it's like typically a branch goes from thick to thin or a tree trunk goes from thick to thin as it goes up. And that's something that, that is kind of, that, that's not subjective in terms of should it or shouldn't it be that way. It's like trees do that. Um, and we, even when a tree doesn't do that, um, it looks wrong when you paint it that way. So some of the people there, well, what about artistic um, license? And what about, you know, the, the artist kind of changing things for their own reason? Um, and that's a very valid point. But the thing is, if you are going to, to stretch things away from reality, you have to do it, first of all, you have to stretch it enough that it's obvious that you have abstracted a shape or an image or whatever, um, and not that it's just pure, poorly drawn. Um, but you also then have to be consistent in that with the rest of the painting. So for example, if there's a painting of trees and 90% of the branches all go from thick to thin and the trees go from thick to thin, or even if even just a few of them do that, you're saying, okay, this painting um, falls within the rules of the way trees look. So once you set that as kind of a framework, then all of your trees have to fit within that or should do, should do that. If they don't, it is just going to look like some of them are wrong because some of them look like real trees and some of them look like these trees that go thick, thin, thick, thin. Um, if you're going to do that, then you need to be consistent with in that with all of your trees. So Brian Rutenberg, who's one of my favorite painters, if you don't know him, I'll put his name up here and you can Google him. He's a perfect example of someone who breaks all those rules. His trees do not go from thick to thin. They are kind of wildly kind of abstracted but he's faithful to that in each painting. However much kind of one tree is abstracted, the rest are abstracted to the same amount. You can't have, I shouldn't say you can't, because you can always break the rules, but generally it's not a good idea to have one, you know, have some aspects of your painting kind of that follow the laws of reality and others that don't, because it just looks like they don't belong together. Um, and another, another time when this kind of came up um, I remember Zoltan Zabo, again, one of the, you know, one of the probably most influential instructors I ever had was talking about reflections. And he was saying that 
you know, reflections are an absolute law of light and physics, and you cannot fudge reflections. Whatever appears above the reflection dictates what must appear below the reflection. So I actually thought, wow, that's one of the, the only times I've ever heard in art where something must always be this way. And I really believed that. Well, then I saw Brian Addio painting, um, and I'll put Brian's name up here to another fabulous artist, and I saw him doing a demo. And he said, oh, when I do reflections, I just, and so this is painting in watercolor. He said, I just, you know, wet the paper and kind of just put colors in and let them run. And it kind of suggests reflections. And I don't, it doesn't even necessarily have anything to do with what's above it. And I remember there, my jaw just dropped. And I thought, that can't be because it's an absolute law of light and physics, the way reflections kind of relate to what's above them. And how can he fudge that? Um, but the thing is, his paintings looked amazing. And then I realized why. It's because in his paintings, nothing is actually reflected below. So he's consistent with that rule that he's dictated in his painting. It's just suggestive of something reflect, reflecting on water, but it's not necessarily what's above it. But if he were to, ref, if he were to accurately reflect one shape above the, the water, whether it was a rock or whether it was a tree or whatever, then he's saying, oh, reality does impinge upon this. And therefore, everything else would have to reflect above. But because he stated the condition in his painting, nothing relates to what's above it, and he sticks with that, it works. Because he's taking it totally out of the realm of where the law of physics and light apply. And so on this painting, um, I've created some subjective realities about the way things interact with each other. And I realized uh, a couple days ago when I was sitting here looking at this, that there's an inconsistency with what I've done. Now I'm gonna actually, I'll take a, uh, a close up and show you this in more detail as I'm talking. But if we look over here, what we basically have is any time one of these shapes, which is suggestive of foliage, um, whenever it crosses a tree, there's a change in color. Um, and it only occurs when a shape crosses one of these tree shapes or when it crosses another foliage shape. Now over here, we have these various shapes within the birch trees or this other tree where there's changes in color as we go up and down. And what I realize I've done over here is where these shapes cross the tree, they are changing color, but I've also got them changing color where they cross these little divisions within the tree. Um, and that's not happening over here because I haven't actually yet gotten to do the trees. So then I have to make a decision about what do I want? The reality has to be the same on this side as it is on this side. So then the decision is, do I want the shapes? Do I want these lines to show through one of the foliage shapes where it's not a division between tree and background or tree and sky? but it's just a division within these subtle changes in the tree. And I realize this is actually confusing and more confusing than over here. So now I have to come in and fix this. And this is one of those things that I do, I wanna fix it now because it's not like this green where it's a subtle color change I may do later. This is kind of impugning the subjective reality that I've created. So any place where I've got a foliage shape where it's just crossing one of these divisions within the tree, I need to go in there now and correct that so that this whole area will be one shape. This will be one shape. That will be one shape. Um, and then I have to come up all of these places where these lines cross the foliage. I need to, if it might still be wet enough that I can actually erase that with a Q-tip. Um, if not, I'll just paint over it. But I have to know now going forward, and when I, if I start painting divisions over here, they're not going to go through the foliage shapes. If it comes to a foliage shape, it's just going to stop, and that shape will be solid within the tree. So that's kind of a complex kind of uh, thought. Um, this comes up a lot too when people are trying to like invent an image. Say you're working from several different different um, reference materials um, and you you know so for example this is something actually you see a fair bit when people are starting out to kind of create their own image from a bunch of different resources 
if we have strong light coming down from here and striking an object and causing a cast shadow, um, then you've created a subjective reality in that painting that there's strong light coming from here. It's strong enough that objects struck by it cast a shadow. Now, if you were to take something, an element from another photograph and put it into that painting, that object must also cast a shadow. But where often people get into trouble, especially when they're starting out, is maybe in their image, there was no cast shadow or the light wasn't strong enough. Um, but that's the case where you need to be consistent with that throughout the entire painting. So once one object casts a shadow, then every single other object must cast a shadow. And if you're introducing or inventing elements in the painting, then that has to be faithful to that reality too. So I hope that's not too confusing. Um, I'm going to get on here and fix these areas. And we'll look at a before, which I'll put up there now. Um, and then once I finish painting these in, we'll see the after. And hopefully you'll be able to get what I'm talking about. So remember that when you are creating your own world on canvas or on paper, you get to kind of dictate what are the, the objective or subjective rules of reality within those four corners. But once you've kind of stated what those are by things you've done, then you have to be very aware of being um, faithful to those rules throughout the whole painting. Um, if you don't, it can just look like stuff is wrong, um, that this doesn't belong with that. Um, so I think I'm going to end on this note and I will continue to work on this piece. And in the next one, we'll probably see a couple days worth of time lapse. So, as always, uh, if you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Um, and if you have any other artist friends or people who you just think would be interested in learning about art or watching art being created, please share it with them. And I welcome your comments and questions. I'm Tim Packer, and I thank you for your time.